We'll get to Katie Hopkins, the gobby one, in just a second here. All right, so here's what has come out today. First broken by Breitbart, uh, dot com, and because they knew that this Washington Post piece was coming out, and their headline is, after endorsing the Democrat in Alabama, Bezos, Washington Post, you know, Bezos owns the Washington Post, for those of you who don't know, uh, plans to hit Roy Moore with allegations of inappropriate relations with teenagers, Judge claims it's a smear campaign. I'll go back and I'll give you the specifics of of all of this. But anyway, it goes on. And the Washington Post headline is women says woman says Roy Moore initiated sexual encounter when she was 14 and he was 32, just a shy of 40 years ago, 40 years ago. Anyway, and it goes on to tell the story about how 1979 that Moore, who's now the Republican nominee in Alabama for the U.S. Senate seat, was a 32-year-old assistant district attorney, struck up a conversation with a girl and her mother, offered to watch the girl while her mother went inside for a child custody hearing. And he said, oh, you don't want to go in there and hear all that. I'll just stay out here with her, he said. Anyway, so the mother says, well, I thought how nice for him to want to take care of my little girl. Now, alone, Moore chatted with the girl, they go on to say, asked for her phone number. Days later, he picked her up around the corner from her house in Gadsden, Alabama, drove for about 30 minutes to his home in the woods, told her how pretty she was and kissed her. On a second visit, she says he took uh, her shirt and her pants and removed his clothes. He touched her bra and underpants and guided her hand to touch him all over his underwear. Remember, we're going back 38, 40 years ago. And I want it over with. I want it out. She remembers thinking. Please just get this over with. Whatever this is, just get it over. Now, two apparent friends of this childhood, childhood friends, said that she told them at the time that she was seeing an older man. And one says that she identified the man as as Judge Moore. Anyway, goes on to say that her daughter told her about the encounter more than a decade later when Moore was becoming a more prominent as a local judge. Now, they then go on to talk about other people, and they talk about specific allegations that one was a 17 years old. Moore spoke to her high school civics class, asked her out on the first of several dates that did not go beyond the progress of kissing. All right. Then another girl says she was 18 years old, a cheerleader, when Moore began taking her on dates, including, you know, bottles of Matus Rose wine. The legal age was one year old or 19 in Alabama. Of the four woman, women, the youngest was the woman that's making this sexual allegation and accusation. And then it goes on. Roy Moore says this. These allegations are completely false and are a desperate political attack by the National Democratic Party and the Washington Post on this campaign. Moore is now 70. This allegedly happened when Moore was 32 years old. And then he goes on to say that the campaign said in a subsequent statement that this garbage is the very definition of fake news. All right. Now, as we came into this segment, we were playing all of these people in Hollywood that knew of Weinstein's reputation. Now, all of this is now, it's sort of like a cascading impact. We've talked about the casting couch. We've talked about, you know, young girls want to get into modeling or music or the TV industry. And I said then, and I said, this is only the beginning. And how right I was since that. Let's see. You have Jeff Bezos of Amazon Studio Head, the guy that worked for him, Roy Price, a victim was a TV producer. Kevin Spacey, all the allegations we've heard about him. You had the National Enquirer picked up all over the country yesterday that Charlie Sheen had, in fact, raped Corey Haim, who later committed suicide. Then you got Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck, in his particular case, two specific allegations against him. Then there were allegations against Dustin Hoffman that go back to 1985. Then you got Jeremy Piven. Then you got the case of Roman Polanski. And because I just wondered, everyone knew about Weinstein. They didn't care. Roman Polanski was accused of plying a 13-year-old girl with alcohol and quaaludes and raping her. Listen to this. And the Oscar goes to Roman Polanski with a pianist. And that was the reaction when the guy that has been living abroad and avoiding justice in America got his Academy Award. That's Hollywood's reaction. Used of a 13-year-old girl. Anyway, here's some really, you know, fascinating questions. How do you know if it's true? How do we, what, what's true? What's not true? How do you ascertain the truth? What happens when it's 38 years later? And it's a serious topic. And because if it's true and people act like this, it's disgusting. It's despicable. It's criminal. If people... You know, some people, do, uh, do people lie? Now, we do have Ten Commandments. One of the commandments is thou shalt not bear false witness. We know human beings break with regularity, 
the other nine commandments. Did they break this one? I mean, it's something to think about. Why is it so bad? Because you can ruin somebody's reputation with an allegation. Katie Hopkins is with us of the Daily Mail across the pond. I mean, you're always outspoken. How do you tell, yeah. how do we, how are we, the American people, to ascertain what is true and not true? It's starting to be an impossible question, isn't it, that doesn't have an answer. But what I would say is that women, and I am loosely a woman, Women have never been so disappointing. Like, the idea to me that someone comes out, what is it, 38 years later, allegedly, and is suddenly remembering how terribly traumatized she was. If she was stood right next to me now, I would be saying to her, that's not good enough. You've taken this many years to remember how upset you used to be. That is not good enough. You are disappointing as a woman. I can't believe in an era where, you know, I watched the pussy marches after Trump's inauguration, marching through the street, how strong women were, or their banners about how strong they are, how their bits and bobs are made of steel. We are so tough. If you're that tough, women, then why aren't you at some point standing up for yourself? We've got British politicians here. But, but Katie, I lo listen, I love you to death. I'm going to tell you what people are going to say to you, feminists in particular. Are you blaming the victim? Are you doubting the victim? That's what people yeah, are going to say. What? Yeah, and, and immediately when people say, oh, my God, you're victim blaming, you're victim blaming, immediately you're supposed to lie down, quake in your boots, like when people throw the term racist about, you know, at me for no reason. You're supposed to lie down and go, no, of course I'm not victim blaming. Well, guess what? Actually, yes, I am at this point. I am pointing the finger straight at, let's just pick this one woman uh, that's been talking about with Roy Moore, allegedly. You know, I am pointing my finger at her, and I'm saying to that woman, you disgust me. You spent 38 years thinking about this before you said anything. Now you decide to speak. You disgust me, because what you're doing, woman, is you're making it so that every other woman like me, who likes working with men, who's happy just cracking on next to men, who actually finds men rather better to work for than women because the sisterhood doesn't exist. You're making women poison to work for. If I was, in, you know, if I was employing someone now, would I employ a woman, especially if I was a man? No, I would not. And women like this do women like me a massive disservice. I'm sick. And I'm sick of all of the Hollywood lot coming out and, you know, screaming about Weinstein after the event. You took his Oscar. Well, let, let me just, let me just take the other side of this for a second. You know, what, what, listen, if any woman is abused, there is a violation. It's, I think it's violence more than it is, you know, when people say, mm. I don't want to get into definitions here. No, of course. But here's, there are predator people out there. There are evil people. And maybe for years there was a stigma associated with telling the truth. And maybe, you know what? Maybe people now feel emboldened because some women have told the truth. But then also, you know, are there false allegations? And when it's he said, she said, or whatever, how do you tell Absolutely. the difference? You know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, because I, I, I actually, in all these cases, I'm sure some of these women are telling the truth. But how do we cool. determine okay. who are and who aren't? And in an age where we cannot, we have to, I think, maybe get to a point where we cannot determine initially who's telling the truth, who isn't, who's been, you know, deceived, who's being manipulated by the Democrats or otherwise. What we, I think, need to do and what we perhaps can do is agree that due process has to be followed so that people are innocent unless proven guilty. And what we've just had in the UK in the last 24 hours, uh, because we're seeing exactly the same pattern happening over here as you have there, we've just had an MP, he was hauled in, he's a Welsh MP, hauled in, he was told about the nature of allegations against him which were unwarranted, no sorry, unwanted attention or groping, he wasn't told what they specifically were and within 12 hours that man was dead because he has a wife and two children and he killed himself because of the shame and the pressure and not knowing what the charges were and yet he was already seen as guilty before he'd even had chance to defend himself and that's what concerns me is we're going to see more people lose their lives, I think, because this sort of thing is so all-pervasive and we can't tell who's lying and who isn't. And the mob just decides that people are guilty as soon as they hear an allegation made. I think that's a terrifying thing. All right, got to take a break. We'll come back. The gobby one, Katie Hopkins, is with us.
All right, as we continue, Katie Hopkins is with us, the Gobby one from the Daily Mail. Is it more credible when there's a series of people making allegations? Like, for example, as I read the Washington uh, Post piece, you know, one girl was 17, one girl was 18. Neither said that there was anything other than him asking them out on dates and kissing them. That's as far as it went in those cases. So I think they included that to make it make the original allegation from nearly 40 years ago bigger. And I think there's no doubt that the Washington Post has an agenda. And one has to ask, why didn't this come out during a primary campaign? Judge Moore has been one of the most controversial figures in Alabama for years. Years. Of course. Of course, he was on our news here in the UK, uh, you know, with them portraying him in exactly the same way last night. Very biased across our media, uh, the portrayal of Roy Moore, very biased in terms of what he's going to bring, that he's an extreme version of Trump. You know, that's the messaging that's being played out on this side of the Atlantic. I don't think it makes it any more credible when you get multiple stories coming out about the same person. I think credibility for me is women that report things within a week, two weeks, a month, or when they found the time and effort and energy and support to report something that's credibility for me if you reported the incident when it happened do you not give any do you not give any years, it's not good enough but, hang on, but you do not give any credence to the idea that this is such a horrific act of evil violence and so traumatizes people that they live in fear they live in in fear of you know a, a how they don't want people to know this horrible thing happened to them so they bottle it up they keep it up inside and then fear that they're not going to be believed, fear that they're going to be blamed, fear, you know, I mean, I think there's legitimate reasons why, you know, and personal reasons why women wait. I, I, I hear you, Sean, and you're kind, and you're... And no, I'm, you're, no I'm, you're, I want to get to truth, and sometimes... Yeah, well, okay, but I think we spend too much time talking about, you know, these women feel this, or these women feel, you know, shame, these women feel this. You know, speaking as someone who's played the system, Sean, I am, you know, my moral bar, as we both know, is very low. I have exchanged at times my youth when I was younger, my whatever I had back then, I exchanged that for power sometimes women make exchanges willingly now you might go back and try and make that the man's fault you know I've worked in multiple offices where very old unattractive men are dating the most attractive woman in the marketing department and that actually is a willing exchange between those two individuals I think the idea that we somehow it's always men preying on women women are very calculating women are very determined about what they want and women are not weak this idea that we're all massive victims I think that's what I find so offensive about this this is setting women back decades because it makes us sound like we can't stand up for ourselves we've got politicians here we managed to get our defense our secretary of defense michael fallon has left his job in the cabinet because he touched someone's knee if that's me i'd be getting my other knee and kneeing him right where the sun don't shine and saying do that again and i'll do that again you know women are, are it's just it's desperate to me that women are portraying themselves as victims as weak as defenseless and vulnerable and I just, I'm sick of it. And I understand your, your kind point, which is uh, that there are real victims out there. But then, you know what, Sean, what really annoys me, all these feminists, they never have one word to say about the victims of Muslim grooming gangs because it's not politically correct to talk about that. So it seems that some victims matter more than others. And that partly is fueling my anger at these women who look for sympathy now 30, 40 years later. All right, uh, I'm going to have to this so... Um... I, I, honest, I honestly think that this is just the beginning of what's going to be a cascading impact. And uh, we're going to have to try and sort this out and get to truth. That's that's my goal in all of this. Katie, we always love having you on. Thank you for being with us. 800, you. 800